Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we got an absolute banger. You're gonna wanna stick around for this one. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but we're gonna be talking about five main things here, key components. I'm gonna try and put some logic because I, if you guys aren't understanding what I'm understanding, there's a, a, a severe IQ gap in what you're listening to, and you're most likely listening to the media, which is very bad, right? Getting information from the media is important to get that information, but to listen to what they are telling you to do is the opposite of what you want to do most of the time. And when you compile too much information, you use too many indicators, uh, you can get a sell and a buy at the same time, and your money's gonna get cycled. So. We're going to be talking about S&P 500. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin. We're going to be talking about Marathon Digital. We're going to be talking about Clean Start, Clean Spark, and we're going to be talking about Micron Technologies today. So, what I have right here is the S&P 500 monthly chart after the dot com bubble and after the 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 uh, 2008 recession. And what I want to go over before we really get into this money talk and how money works and what we're looking with here. Um, is how and why does the stock market go down? And there's really two reasons, but you could kind of argue three. There is three main reasons why stocks in the stock market assets equities will ever go down in the history of the world, and this will not change. Reason number one is war, right? Why war? War in the country, because buildings, assets, all these different things that ha have been built up throughout time, have been paid for, ha ha hold materialistic value, will then be destroyed. Number two is if people stop going to work. Why? Well, there's not work being done. There's not a, an existing amount of trade. There's not new buildings being made. Stop. Money will come out because your money is then worth less because your assets are then worth less. That is what happened with COVID. Why was there a big crash? Well, because people stopped going to work, right? And the third reason is if there's a fundamental underlying misunderstanding or mismanagement of money. Hence, the 2008 financial crisis, the 2000 dot-com bubble, 1970s uh, interest rate recession, uh, 1930 recession. These recessions are a combination of, of war, people not working, and a mismanagement of money, and they compile for stocks to go down and go down rapidly in the short term as people scramble to take the what assets they can and turn them into cash so that they can pay for things. and. What we have here is the monthly chart right after the dot com bubble, or um, or right after the dot com bubble, and right after the two thousand eight recession. And after we broke the highs of the two thousand and eight recession, exponentially went up. We have to really zoom and warp this this trend of how much stocks really went up. And sure, was there a peak and a consolidation here uh, uh, in the 2015-2016 era? Yes. And was I in the stock market and could I explain to you what happened here? No. But I mean, if I was, I'd easily be able to explain that. But once again, right after that little blip in time, ba-boom, go up again exponentially. Exponentially. Now, there was some interest rate... Uh, uh, things that happened here again but this logarithmic chart is very very crazy and when you zoom it out and to make it look more so normal to, to to approach what's going on right now well these candles that just look very big look very very small right and that is likely what is going to happen here we have had this Okay, COVID crash, but this wasn't meant to be the crash. You have interest rates and a more of a realization of a recession. But look at where the MACD on this monthly is curling up. They, I cannot express this enough on how much money is likely going to pour into markets over the next three to five years. If you don't own assets, I don't know what you're doing because you are going to be losing. And, and people say that, uh, look at Canada, look at America. People are struggling to, to pay their mortgages down, struggling to pay for food. Uh, inflation is so high. These people do not own assets. These people do not invest in assets. These people work and then spend their money and get it taken from them by by, by the I industry, by by be, to, to live off of because they don't buy assets and that's the problem right and that's simply just a problem for them and that's not a problem for us watching this channel so to say that oh people are struggling and that's the market is going to go down is is one of the worst 
thesis is that you could possibly have. It's like saying, oh, stocks are too high. We shouldn't buy them. They're at all time highs. Well, the amount of money and what your money is, is worth today is not going to be what your money is worth tomorrow because there is things called inflation and then accumulation of assets. The, these companies that are doing work and putting out work are, are increasing the, the intrinsic value of their company. Okay. And, and so that is why the, the, the stock market forecasts money is because in the future, your, your money is not going to be worth what it is today. And it doesn't exponentially forecast money because if it got ahead of itself, there's possibilities of wars of these other events, right? And that's why you kind of have, have maintained in that 20 price to earnings ratio because typically every 20 years, there is a massive uh, uh, war or there's a massive uh, mess up by, by governments or, or people stop going to work because of the mess up of governments. But you can see clearly on this MACD channel that, that this is going up, right? And, and you look on the daily, the Fed, they, they, they've given you the, the go ahead that they're not going to raise interest rates. And that's all the market really cared about is, okay, interest rates are going to come down. Inflation is still very high. Their target price for inflation is about 2%. And we're seeing about 3.2%, uh, 3%, about 50% higher than what they expect. So your, your target price is high, but then they're still going to reduce interest rates. There's just more money in the market. Your money of what your money is worth today is not what your money was worth two years ago. And that's, that's a crucial understanding because why have these large cap companies, your Apples, your Microsofts, your NVIDIAs, your Googles, your Netflixes, all have gone up over the past year, even though interest rates are far higher than they were back in 2020, right? 2020, interest rates were low. Um, there's a lot of uh, no interest rates, which means lots of people borrowing money. What does borrowing money mean? Deployable cash flow into, into the market. We've went over this. You don't borrow debt to sit on your cash that you borrowed. You borrow debt so that you can deploy it into the market. You spend that money, whether you're spending it to buy assets, pay off your car loan, that money is entering into circulation of the economy, right? And when interest rates are high, there's less people borrowing extra money. So there's less excess money, right? But if inflation is high and people still borrow money, there's a lot of money to come into the market, right? And what was happening is in the stock market is it takes years, it takes months, it takes quarters to cycle this money into the market. It, it takes time. Nothing just happens instantly. It takes time to get a bank loan. It takes time to buy a car. It takes time to, to produce things. So over time, money is progressing through the market and you do not want to go against the trend. At some point in the future, years down, maybe months down, it doesn't really matter. Uh, an event, a world event that is crucial will happen and it will start to tank stocks. Stocks will, will, will pull equity out of the market, but there is no reason to suggest that is going to happen. And you have all the more reason to suggest that over the period of, of the next few months, especially leading up to elections, that money is going to flow into the market. The S&P 500 was up 0.9% today. Uh, the, the Russell 2000 was up 2% today. These are very, very, very crucial topics to understand because if you understand the directional flow of money, which is typically up over the past 100 years and will typically be up for, for the, the remainder of time, right? And without with certain periods where, where lots of money gets quickly extracted, um, you are going to be more successful. And in terms of that, you want to be the places where the the cyclical sectors are, are getting a lot of the money because the s p 500 because these indices make up the more global economy your gains are very much limited they're limited to, to the fractions of percentages uh whereas if you understand the sector that is that is having money flow into it well you stand to make a lot more money and let's get into bitcoin okay uh this is the chart here up 8%, absolutely phenomenal day. Uh, but I want to go to the four hour chart and really show you the breakout line that we have here. We bounced off the 200 moving average, very crucial. That is your upwards trend. That is where it came back from. And I want to tell you, $74,000 got all the way down to $61,000. That's about an 18% drop. And that's what you can expect when uh, a when it goes up almost 100 percent right 38,000 to 74,000 right you're just a bit off there um right and, and so two thought by two thousand dollars and an 18 percent pullback is 
very, very necessary, very, very understandable, and it happens. But you can, like I've said in a, uh, one of my previous videos of understanding the short-term and the long-term trends, the long-term trend is clearly being identified as up, right? You can look at the weekly chart, uh, it, it's going up, very bullish green candle likely will break and move higher right in the coming weeks you look at the daily still very bullish trend but what we were looking at is the four hourly and the short term trend on the four hourly has been down and you can see how it resisted here the moving averages crossed you got some selling pressure came down to a bounce zone retested the trend line down established a more significant trend line down which enabled us to draw the trend line rejected came back down and bounced right off of not only the 200 moving average but as well as the flash crash that we had when Bitcoin really started to pump and there's reasons for this there was money is coming out of the market because okay the Fed could say something bad we've we're up a lot we might as well take gains as well as the fact that grayscale has been consistently selling Bitcoin sold over 12 billion dollars worth of Bitcoin over the past couple of months this is because they have 1.5% fees as an ETF when you can simply get a 0.25% to 0% fee of any of the other ETFs. It makes no practical sense to ever put your money in grayscale. And, and that's just a fundamental, uh, uh, that's just a business model error. That's their fault, right? If they want to get money and they want you to invest in money there, well, they're going to have to lower their fees. Otherwise, people will just take their money out. And that's what's happening. And that means that they have to sell their Bitcoin to pay the cash for the shares that are being sold uh, of, of the net outflow of money from Grayscale, right? And that is a temporary dip. There is a clear inflow, and we're going to get to that. Uh, don't you worry about the order inflows today. This is going to be a longer video. But you can clearly see that, that there is not enough Bitcoin uh, as people want to buy it. The reason why the price has crashed, well, a lot of price comes up, shorts pile on. When, when price comes up and then there's a technical indicator to sell, well, then they start to sell, right? They'll short, uh, people take profits, and Grayscale fundamentally had to, to sell their Bitcoin. But you can see the trend is down. You can see the bottomly support line and you can see that look at this we're breaking out on the four hour where we we're, we're back tested the 20 moving average and we're holding support and if we go to the daily this is a bullish engulfing candle one of the best candles that you can possibly have on the stock market as well as we're back above the 20 moving average the 10 moving average has not crossed and we could be very much so above that 10 moving average and what do you know we're back at sixty nine thousand dollars which is your previous break point and then you could be back at sixteen or seventy thousand dollars which is very bullish and then you go to seventy four thousand there's not enough bitcoin uh, uh in the market and i've said this uh many times uh for the price that it's at for for the the net uh, asset price of the stock, okay, or, or of the equity. Now the MACD is con had converged, but I, I what I expect to see is in the coming days, let's say three three days it takes us to get to uh, seventy four thousand by the end of the week, and the weekend kind of tails out. Well, that will have given us enough time to round out, and we'll be looking to make the bullish convergence on the MACD again, and likely move much much higher, right? Approach that hundred thousand dollar mark, right? And that's the bullish indicator that most people are looking for. And above hundred thousand dollars, who knows what can go from there? And and look at this, we're March twentieth, one month, thirty days from now 30 candlesticks we have the having okay so let's get into marathon digital which i want to talk to you about today up 16 percent uh very bullish i've talked to you guys about relative strength there is very evident relative strength you're seeing the macd likely converging here okay they've made a share equity offering i expect the macd on this next bullish cycle to get past or at the same level relatively to these but because the stock is so much higher than it was when it made these initial moves up well the macd on the stock could eventually reach up into this $50 range, okay? Very important to note, 2X possible from here. You're seeing very bullish candles. It's above the 10 moving average. The 20 moving average is just in sight there. Uh, like I said, MACD is converging. And we're gonna talk about the technical analysis of CleanSpark, then we're gonna talk about Micron, and we're gonna go into some order flow. So CleanSpark, very bullish once again to MACD converging on the daily. We like to see this. There is resistance point here, but we can also, add a little trend line right from here 
draw this sloping support down. You also have your bottoming tail, your bottoming line right here, uh, your breakout point from that. And what do you know, you went through another resistance point and this is a very bullish flag. This is bullish on the MACD. This is bullish on the daily. This is very bullish for the stock. Um, and other than the fact I just simply dislike the valuation relative to Marathon Digital because of their exahash, sure, they may be more uh, open with their mining and more consistent with their mining, but they simply do not have the same level, the capacity of exahash, the Bitcoin on hand, and the cash on hand that Marathon Digital does relative to the valuation and why I like it less. But it doesn't mean I don't like this stock at all. And the technical analysis even suggests more bullish as the 10 moving average is crossing above the 20 moving average, which I've talked about is a very bullish daily indicator, right? And lastly, we're going to talk about Micron. Now, we're going to zoom out to the weekly. We're going to delete these little uh, can candlesticks here. And what we're going to draw is a very nice line of the triple top right here, which we've broken through, we retested, and after hours, we were up 14%. The after hours puts us at what, 110? So we can draw the line here at 110. And that's what we're trading at after hours. Very bullish, but in terms of this weekly candle, you don't get much more bullish of the triple top than this. And in terms of evaluation, Micron just produce very good earnings. They have the revenue. They are in the proper sector. Everybody wants to be in this chip sector. And they're only a $100 billion company. Now, I guess after hours, a $110 billion company that's fine, but a company that is in a sector with NVIDIA, 2.3 trillion, ARM up at 150 billion with only uh, uh, $800 million in revenue per quarter, and AMD at 300 billion, this is a $100 billion company doing $6 billion of revenue, right? And they just made money too this quarter. I want you to note that. Back in 2022, they made a, a very big f chip factory. Uh, so they have the potential to grow. And in terms of what do they do? Well, well, they're a memory chip company, if you don't know. And where is this big push? This is a big push for in, in sectoral push of AI, artificial intelligence for data centers and computational computing. What happens after you have a lot of data, a lot of computational computing and AI. Well, you need to have memory chips to store this information and innovate. This is a tech innovative stock. This is a stock that just produced good earnings. This is a stock that is breaking out of over a multi-week trend in a bull market. I, I don't see a safer uh, chip stock at a good valuation than Micron, especially after their earnings, right? And that's just my opinion. Like I said, uh, in terms of percentage gains and making the most money, I own Marathon Digital. I own CleanSpark. And, and because it's leveraged Bitcoin, because I believe it's at a good price, and, and specifically because in the stock market, we can sell options. And that is what I plan to do, is sell options when these stocks, when Marathon Digital gets back above 35 bucks a share, heads toward 40, 40, 50, I'm going to be able to make one to even $5 a week on premium out of the money options, which with 4,300 shares is a very, very substantial amount of money. And, and this is just simply a very nice TFSA long-term safer hold stock that I, that I wanted to mention, okay? And now what we're going to get into is the order flow of Marathon Digital. We, had, we talked to you guys about 123. Look at this, 25, 4, 29. What did we see when there was institutional order flow? Well, we saw the relative strength relative to Bitcoin of Marathon Digital perform very, very, very well, okay? And when we saw there was massive order outflow, it was underperforming the, the relative price of Bitcoin. What what Marathon should be doing relative to Bitcoin, right? And that's very, 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 very important things to note because it allows us to identify the trend and identify the shift of institutional money who largely will make up the price of a stock. And the same thing is to be said about CleanSpark here. Lots of large scale order flows, very, very important. And the last one I want to get to here is not bitwise, but once again, it's another ETF, right? It has lots of good order inflows in terms of the market of, of Bitcoin ETFs, but I guess I can just search this up, right? Um, oh. 
this one right here the uh, black rocks ETF iShares bit pro most order inflow of Bitcoin we have seen in a while okay so the the order flow of Bitcoin it is far but over there was two days where it sunk and there was order outflow well grayscale was coming down profit taking risk off all these different things this, this Bitcoin has gone up so 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 much there had to be this pullback but now you have seen an 18% pullback you've seen profit takers uh, 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 be allowed to to take their profits and, and now you're allowed to cycle the next level of money in and the trend of the market the, the trend of the market has clearly been identified as up uh, stocks are uh, indices don't just go up when fed the fed speaks and then change their mind especially when it's in the same direction of what the trend has been so uh i just want you guys to take this information uh and think about it think about what i'm saying think about why i'm saying that and when we come back here in a month from now i mean not that i'm going to wait a month to make some videos but we can clearly we will be able to look back on this and say this is why bitcoin went up this is why Micron went up. This is why Marathon Digital went up. This is why CleanSpark went up. And we're gonna think that we're some geniuses because we all made a bunch of money, but really we're not. We're just using a little bit of logic, looking at the signs and executing accordingly. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.